Welcome everybody to Come Back to Love Foundations. And this is the first time doing this class and I'm really excited actually. It um, seems to be a culmination of, well, I suppose I could say 57 years, but I won't say that, but a culmination of, <laughs> of at least the last 10 years sort of putting together um, my vision of come back to love and also uh, what it means and what prevents us from coming back to love and what that even means. So anyway, I'll say a lot more, but I just wanted to say that I'm really excited to be doing this class for the first time and welcome to everybody who is here live and welcome to those listening later. Look forward to seeing you live in one of the other classes um, if that works and just want to open up the chat for questions so all right so my plan for today is to introduce you to the class to do kind of an overview of the four dimensions of come back to love and because this is class one my intention is to um, give an opportunity for some self-inquiry to kind of see where you're at um, connect with your own understanding of come back to love, see what, um, what in your life fits into the different categories that I'm gonna talk about, which will support you in having an intention for the five weeks that we'll spend together. So that's my intention for today. And then to have some Q and A at the end, if you have any questions and feel free just to put questions in the chat and also you can ask them later. Um, but if you'd like want to remember something and you, you know, you can just sort of, we can have a running um, tab in, in the chat if we need to. So that is my intention for today. And first and foremost, I would like to invite us to have a centering meditation. So be comfortable where you are. If you are driving and listening or walking around, this is a moment to pause if you can. And just take a breath in and gently close your eyes. Deep, deep, deep breath, all the way down from root to crown. Hmm. I invite you to just allow your body to relax a little bit, maybe a little bit more than you're feeling in this moment. I know that some of you, because I'm recording this during the holiday time, you know, have been kind of busy and lots of things going on. And anyway, in life, there's lots of things going on. So let's take a moment to just settle into being present. I invite you to connect with the earth beneath you. So just bring your attention to the earth. And then as you inhale, Invite her energy into your energy field. And invite it to kind of travel and seep up from the root chakra to the crown and expand out from your physical body into the space around you. Good. And as you take a deep breath, I'll invite you to expand your energy field out to the four corners of the space you're in. And some of you are doing that for the first time. So I just want to invite you to expand left and right, front and back, especially the back, which is a, can be a harder place to expand out from and above and below. And then continue expanding your energy field out into the town that you're in or the city. And you're getting a sense of who you truly are, which is more than just your physical body. And keep going, expanding out into the country you're in, the continent. Hmm, across the ocean, both directions, in all directions. Continuing across the globe, 
I mean, all the way around the globe. <laughs> And even out to the sun, the stars, the moon, in all directions. And now notice the ease of your breath, the ease of your body. Notice most likely any places that we're feeling a little tense, like jaw or shoulders or belly are likely to feel either completely relaxed or more relaxed. And from this space, it's much easier to receive. And it's a big piece of come back to love because it's really all about receiving and opening to receive. And most likely you might have or do now feel like I used to feel, which was like, I'm receiving. <laughs> I'm receiving what's going on with receiving, but I really wasn't for lots of reasons. So there might be something in here for you around that. So a couple of nice deep breaths. Notice if you do have an intention for participating in this class, if it shows up now from the space, not from the mind or from the space that you just created for yourself. What's in your awareness? What shows up in your awareness in that space? And then have a breath, gently open your eyes. And like I had mentioned, please have a journal or a pen and paper around just available to you. So we are gonna move into some more guided visualizations that will invite questions for you to, again, not um, tune into your mind and what your mind is telling you, but what's in your awareness when I ask the questions, which is, you know, that's like a whole shift in being just that because most of us, all of us are trained to like, ah, focus on the mind. What does the mind tell us and get into logic and all of that uh, brain power. <laughs> so what I'm inviting as we come back to love in our practice and learn more about what that means is I'm inviting us into a more, way more expansive place than just the sort of contraction of the mind and way more awareness for ourselves and who we are, who we truly are, which is not just this body and not just this mind. So just feeling yourself in a more expansive place gives you a sense, more of a sense of who you truly are. And I do invite you to stay in that space um, with eyes closed if that feels the best for you. As I always say, I never wanna interrupt anybody's flow. So stay right there if that feels you know, the best for you. Um, so yes, so as we move into self-inquiry, um, I wanna just emphasize to allow your awareness to expand and tune into what is being given to you. And when you do that for the first time or for the hundredth time or the thousandth time, you can, you can become aware of things that might not make sense to your mind. So I wanna just emphasize that also, highlight that that can happen. It's like something might show up and it's like your mind is going like, what, what is that? Or that doesn't make sense. Or I don't understand that. Or that doesn't mean anything to me, but it doesn't mean that it's not actually a truth that's living in your energy body and your awareness. It just means that your mind is confused or having doubt or whatever, because the mind just has, needs to be very logical. So I want to destroy and uncreate all of our needs to be logical <laughs> and just let that go. Wow. Wouldn't that be an incredible world, huh? Well, that's what I'm going for. So um, I've been thinking about that a lot, actually, because on the Costa Rica retreat I was on uh, leading last couple weeks ago, uh, somebody said to me, you want 
you just want everybody in the world to fall in love with everybody else. And um, I like paused for a moment and I was like, yeah, actually I do. That is what I want. And as I've been thinking about that and kind of writing about it, I've been thinking about this juxtaposition between the logical brain and love and um, what it would be like if the world was, uh, if we were all in this space of expansiveness and love and we value the logical mind, but we didn't make it like the most important thing, which I feel like it is in our culture. So I'm thinking about that. <laughs> Something that came into my awareness. All righty. So like I said, my intention for today is to explain the four dimensions of come back to love and how each of them plays a role in our capacity to come back to love, to be in our hearts and um, how trauma and injury and wounding and just life, and midlife crises, et cetera, impact. And today's intention, just to say it again specifically, is to give you an overview and also time to assess what's happening in your life right now when it comes to love and come back to love. And that might include intimacy, um, certainly emotional intimacy with yourself and others. It might include physical intimacy, I don't know. Um, but the point is to have time to assess and look at what the roadmap looks like to come back to love given these four dimensions. And then each of the classes, the next four, I'll go in depth into each of them. And um, I know at least one of you is here because one of them kind of sparked your interest and it's like, I want more on that one. Um, so rest assured, you will receive that. <laughs> Um, yeah. So I would think I want to say why, uh, why, why are we doing this? What's the point? Um, and when I sort of hone in on that piece, the why has to do with being in our hearts, but also like, why do we want to be in our hearts? Well, okay. It feels good, but also it means we're aligned with ourselves. And it means when we're in alignment with ourselves and our hearts that we make right, right choices for ourselves. When I say right choices, I don't mean right and wrong. I mean, right aligned choices for ourselves. When we do that, our opportunities expand. We make choices for ourselves that are aligned, therefore our highest good, therefore the highest good of the universe. Um, and this, it includes everything. It includes health, it includes relationships, it includes you know money, jobs, um, all your all of our choices every single thing actually and you being love and being aligned means that you get to create the most for you and also for those you love so for some people when they think about come back to love they're like oh i want to be in relationship and come back to love is like singles coaching for relationship and it can be that and lots of people have actually <laughs> i need to keep track but there's more and more people that are falling in love and that come to my in person things and in the last year a handful of them actually got married which is so cool um but it's not about that you know totally for me it's a much broader broader much broader much bigger um my aspirations are a lot bigger than that um, and that's not, I'm not devaluing, devaluing that that's important, but I just want to say that, um, you know, my aspirations for what I want to do in the world and what I feel compelled to share includes that and a lot bigger than that. So that's why I just, that's why it's important for me to name that it's about being aligned and then making aligned choices for ourselves in the world that are infused with love and how much better our lives are as a result, how much better the lives are of the people around us and how much um, that contributes to the whole planet and the earth. I think it's, we can get stuck in like, oh, this is just me and this is about me or maybe this is about me and my partner or this is about me and my small family, but it's not that because you just expanded into your own energy field, which went out way into the universe. And so everything you do and all the choices that you make impact everything. And I think it's easy to forget that that's 
true. Um, yeah, we're certainly not, I don't know about you guys, you, all of you, but you know, I wasn't taught that that was true. <laughs> certainly not. So um, I think it's just a really good reminder. So what happens when we're not in our hearts and we're not coming back to love, just to name the flip side is that, and I'm sure we can all remember choices, maybe even yesterday or this morning that, you know, it's easy to make misaligned choices. Um, you know, maybe it's a partner that wasn't quite right or, you know, foods or movement in your body that didn't resonate. Um, maybe there's struggles financially, uh, maybe there's struggles with work, um, maybe there's struggles with health and dis-ease. All of those things are a result of us not being aligned with ourselves and our energy channels not open enough to receive what we need. So that's the, uh, that's the flip side. All right, so we're gonna dive right in um, with that to the self-inquiry piece. So have your writing utensils nearby if you're gonna do the exercise now. And I'm gonna invite you to have a breath and gently close your eyes again. Hmm. So this is an invitation to look at your own life since each of you comes to this work on your own path. And each of you comes to this to come back to love from your own entry point. You know, when I think about why people come and work with me and do workshops and take classes, it's like there are some generalities and, um, and people are coming for very specific reasons. So you all come from your own entry point. So let's start with some questions, which is what does come back to love mean to you? You can allow things to come into your awareness. Like I said, you can take a pause and write down, you can stay in the meditation. However, this piece works for you the best. How does it feel when you're in love? And you might even let yourself feel that for a moment because it feels so good. How does it feel when you're not? in love. And let's, let's think about that for a bit. When you're not in love, you're likely angry, sad, upset. There's something you've identified as a problem. Um, it might be something you know or don't know. You might just be sort of feeling blah. You might be in, you know, a disconnect or some distance in your current relationship or any of your relationships. So just the invitation is to kind of scan. If you have a partner, to scan partner, to scan inside yourself, to scan uh, friends, children, if you have them, other, you know, parents, whether they're still on the planet or not, you know, our relationships with our parents persist and continue, whether they're here in the present or not. So what are those like for you? And to look at the triggers or looking at triggers, I would say is really one way to begin excavating even more information about what's keeping you separate from love. So it's not always pleasant to go down a path of a trigger, but it really is helpful to help you figure out what stories from your past are still playing out in the present. So let's take a moment to look at last time you were feeling angry, let's say, or sad. Those tend to be more common uh, feelings that we have. And if you can pull one example for yourself, and again, we're just using this as an example. It's literally just to get information about um, 
about what's playing out in your life. I recently had a big trigger with my partner back in November. And when I sat down with somebody and reported kind of how it all showed up for me, I got a lot of information from going through what happened. I got to see, oh, my body had a reaction first. Didn't really know that, even though I knew I was feeling sensation in my body and it was really uncomfortable. Then I got to see, oh, my body was uncomfortable and that triggered my mind. And now my thoughts were running amok, basically. Um, and I got to see that and I got to see, oh, well, what are those, what were those thoughts telling me? Oh, those thoughts were telling me, you know, fill in the blank with, you know, 10, 12 things my thoughts were telling me. And then I got to see, oh, I was having an emotional re reaction to those thoughts. So slowing it down was really, really helpful, like tremendously helpful. And because it happened so quickly, when we have triggers, they tend to kind of happen really quickly, right? Thus the word trigger. Um, it's really hard to, it can be really hard to see actually what happened. And the question of what shows up first, is something we'll get into in another class, but what shows up first, a body sensation, a thought, or a feeling is a really interesting question because that gives you actually a lot of information. So for example, what information I got from realizing I had a body reaction first, a body sensation, was that it was something from my past that just like is still so present in my body, that my body had its own response without me even like knowing what was happening. So that was really really, really helpful. Um, so just as an example. So maybe the last time you were angry, if you can think of something or sad, maybe you can also have information for yourself, like what showed up first? Was it a body sensation? Was it a thought? Was it a feeling? Meaning an emotion. And maybe you notice what you're telling yourself in your mind. So this might all be clear and it might not be clear and that's fine. It doesn't have to be clear because what you can notice is like, it's not clear. It's all not, it's all a big mess. You know, it's all a big mush and that's also good information. So again, there's no right, wrong, good or bad about what you're learning and seeing, it's just information. So, I just want to give you, yeah, I just want to give you another 30 seconds or so to allow information to come up around the question of what keeps you separate. And the separation is from yourself, from your heart, and the separation is then also from others. And the separation from others is easier to see, right? That person did this and therefore, you know, I'm angry, I'm triggered, I'm sad, I'm whatever. It looks like it's from the other person. It's much harder to see, oh, that's actually a separation from myself and my own heart. And yeah, something happened, but the mirror reflection is the important piece. It can look like someone else isn't doing it right or they're doing it wrong and they're not doing it the way you want them to and therefore they should change. But all of that is all thoughts. Those are all thoughts that I just said out loud, right? Those are all thoughts in the mind. And we know <laughs> thoughts are not uh, necessarily true. In fact, they're often not true. I would venture to say that the mind, as I said, as I started with this with, the mind wants logic, the mind wants definition, the mind wants to understand, the mind wants it all to make sense. The mind has so many agendas, so many hidden agendas. It's really important to recognize that, that that's actually what's going on because we believe our thoughts. Uh, you know, we were taught to believe our thoughts and we believe our thoughts. And that's what our culture teaches us too, to believe our thoughts, to develop the mind. Yeah. 
So I'm going to invite you to have a breath. Gently open your eyes if you're ready to open them. If you want to stay with your eyes closed in meditation, that's great too. For those of you that are opening your eyes for the first time, um, I would invite you to have pen and paper nearby, or not nearby, I would invite you to pick up your pen and paper and do some writing. I'll give you guys a couple minutes to do that. And for those of you listening to the recording, I'm gonna be a little silent. I don't know if I'll be fully silent, but I'll be silent for a bit while you're writing. Or if you're listening to the recording, you might pause the recording here and do some writing until that feels complete and then continue on with the class. Good, so just about 30 more seconds. <clears throat> and also know that this list isn't complete, you know, that it's just what's showing up today. Um, I would invite you to, at least during the five weeks that we'll be together, to maybe keep a little running tab of the things that show up because there's micro triggers and there's big, the big blowout trigger, like the one I shared about my relationship in November. It was like, <laughs> there was no arguing. That was an obvious, you know, bomb exploding. Um, but then there's all these little micro things that happen. And when that came into my awareness, I started noticing all the micro things that can be really, really tiny and not noticeable, but still have impact. Some of them won't have impact and you're like, oh, okay, whatever, I can let that go, right? But others actually do have impact and they build and build and build, or they create a pattern that keeps getting reinforced. So it can be really interesting if you take this on, let's say in the context of the five weeks, we're gonna be studying this material together that you invite, um, you invite an expansion of your awareness around those subtle micro triggers. Because next thing you know, I mean, how many, I mean, you know, my work, I've worked with lots of couples and, you know, the, the, the effect of things being you know, built up over time, it's really evident. Obviously when they step into doing work, they're, you know, they've allowed things to build up for a long time. But sometimes it's just been like these micro things over long periods of time. So just inviting that into your awareness.
All right. So part two of today, looking at the four dimensions, naming the four dimensions of come back to love, first of all, and then looking at them briefly. And the invitation for you is to look at the list you have or the information of the things you wrote down and see um, for you which category you feel like they fit into. Some of them will definitely be in more than one category and some of them won't. And again, you can't get this right or wrong. So it's just a matter of just helping you sort of see where, not only, not where they came from, because that part is probably obvious to you, but uh, what path to do the healing work on. Because I'll say before I get to the first one, which is emotional healing, I mean, our culture tends to focus and the therapy world a lot on emotional healing. There's a lot on emotional healing. Um, a lot of really good on emotional healing. But what I realized is that actually that's not the whole story and we can do emotional healing till we're blue in the face and we might still be blue in the face. And it's not that the healing isn't happening, but it's not gonna complete unless we look at the other dimensions to finish it. Um, that is something that has been really important for my own healing and also a huge aha several years ago, you know, just, and with all the, um, you know, background, my own background in counseling and psychology, it's like what really got, you know, honored was the emotional healing and there was nothing about the other pieces. So um, it's really important. So emotional healing is the first one, um, which I don't have to talk much about because we know what that is. <laughs> and uh, there's many ways to do it. And I tend to feel um, feel really connected to processes that Im incorporate the body, um, that are experiential. And for me, you know, versus just sort of talking about the emotional things, but the experiential piece and the somatic piece is really, for me, really an important piece, which relates to, uh, the other, I guess I'm just going to say the other three, um, so you can kind of see the whole picture. So we have emotional healing, we have the energy and the energetic awareness of who we truly are and how we, um, how that is a really important part of coming back to love. You had an example of that in the beginning. Um, nervous system, which is a really big topic, um, which um, is a really big topic. I mentioned how my body had a reaction, a sensation feeling in the body reaction when I had that big trigger a couple months ago. And that's an example of my nervous system and how the nervous system is uh, gets wired in a certain way and how if we just do the emotional work, we're actually not capturing the patterns that are set very strongly in the body um, that will keep activating if we don't do that particular work. And so that's nervous system and then spiritual awareness, which is so important for big perspective, broad perspective. For me, the, the piece around spiritual awareness is really looking at our soul and our soul journey, why we're here, what the, what the lessons are, um, what our souls have chosen to bring us to in this lifetime, and what we're going to do about that <laughs> to evolve our souls and continue on our journey, whether you believe in another lifetime or not. And whether you believe in a soul or not, for me, I do very strongly believe that our souls chose to be here, um, have a really broad picture that's very hard to see as a human, um, and that there's um, a very clear um, purpose for our soul journey here and the healing that happens while we're here right now, and that that is all part of a huge picture of the soul evolving to the next level, to the next level, to the next level. So that is my piece on that. <laughs> um, so let me just look at my notes here to see what I want to say next. I think what I want to do is I just gave you a tiny bit about each one. And so I think I'm going to go back. I think I, the part around spiritual awareness that feels complete. I said that, um, that when we can't 
when we can't go 30 feet up or 100 feet up and look down at a situation, we're really not able to see um, the big picture of what's happening. And when we're stuck in a trigger, for example, or a disagreement or something that seems just completely impossible to resolve, which you know I know all of us probably have experienced, um, it can feel like it's completely impossible. But what happens when you go up high and look down is you can gain lots of perspective from that space. And that's really important because that's the place where we are able to glean compassion for ourselves and compassion for the other people that are involved in the situation. And that allows us to come back to love, right? Having compassion. It's gonna be hard to get to when we're pretty angry and contracted. So that's the spiritual awareness. Emotional healing, like I said, I, I don't think, I don't wanna go in, I mean, I don't need to spend a lot of time on that. We all know, like, <laughs> you know, things happen to us as children. At this point, I feel like pretty much everybody, you know, every single person. And somebody asked me recently, like, well, what, what happened? You know, we were in this, we're, we're love. We come in as loving beings. What happened? And what happens to people? And I said, life, like, you know, for some people, there were really traumatic things that happened to them. And that is my life story. But I just feel like life happens and that separates us. Um, that separates us from ourselves and then from others and from love, from the source that we are, that we've always been. And so, yeah. So that emotional healing, obviously, you know, we all need to do, figure out what happened, what did happen, whether it's really obvious or not, and then where the healing you know, needs to happen on the emotional level. And all of these things, of course, are um, intertwined with each other. As I said, they don't, you know, as you're, think, as you're looking at your list and thinking like, which category do they go into? My guess is most of them will show up probably in all the categories or at least two or three of them, you'll have to let me know. Um, and then when we go to energy and energetic awareness, that is a really big piece as well, because um, when we think of ourselves as just our bodies and we think of ourselves as just this small body, it's often contracted, uh, we're not even able to receive love from that place. And most people are walking around tight, contracted, uh, squeezed in, not in the space that we came to when we did the meditation when we first arrived here, where our capacity is to receive is so much greater in that space. And um, knowing that we are infinite beings is a really big paradigm shift for the brain and really important when it comes to come back to love. Because one of the questions I love actually, when I really got that I am a massively expanded infinite being is would an infinite being choose this, whatever it is, whatever this is. And that's a huge important question. Would an infinite being choose this? What is the answer to that question when you ask it to yourself about the thing you're thinking of, you know? It's often quite a different response than the mind. So that's a really important piece of come back to love for me. And the actual practice of expanding your energy field and knowing, feeling in your body, the sense of expansion, the space, and what that opens up for you is massive. I want to say one more thing. I'm probably going to repeat myself when we do some of this, when we do, you know, the four weeks around on each one and that's fine. But I think one of the, one of the things that just pops into my awareness right now around this piece is that we all grew up with, um, if you think about it, probably a limited number of options for work in the world. Um, they probably expanded as you got older, you know, for me, it was like, I'm going to be a teacher. Maybe I'll be a doctor. Maybe I'll be a lawyer. Uh, 
I didn't do any of those things. Um, but, um, you know, we all kind of, there's all sort of things that fit into nice boxes in our families and in our, the culture we grew up in. But how much more is there that we didn't even think about when we were in that limited way, we were just in our bodies and our minds and we were in the limitation of what our families or the schools we went to. And if we go into this expansive place that we went into and we totally expand outward, it's like the possibilities are endless. There's not even a limitation on what we can do, what we can share with the world, what we can offer, what our gifts are. It's massive, but we don't, we don't allow ourselves that, um, you know, just to have that, to have that space, to have that spaciousness and openness to receive that information. So that's what comes to me today around that for some reason, <laughs> only you know. Um, and then the last one, not in any particular order, is the nervous system, uh, nervous system injury, nervous system patterns, and what gets created with all of this what gets created in our nervous systems is something that the body finds predictable. And, you know, I'm sure all of you have had the experience of something, of a pattern repeating itself of, you know, why does this keep happening to me? Or why does this keep happening in my life? Or, um, why can't I heal X? Why can't I change habit or behavior? Why? Uh, you know, there's a zillion things. And it's because the mind, obviously connected to the nervous system is, you know, part of the nervous system, um, wants, like I said, predictability, wants to understand, wants it to be logical, wants it to be predictable. Even if it's some, you know, there'll be so many people, you know, and it's, well, this is a really obvious, you know, an obvious example, but there are people and many of us have done the same because we choose things that are comfortable, even if they're not aligned choices from our hearts. So you'll see people, right, choosing relationships over and over again that are abusive. Why? Because it's comfortable. It's predictable. It doesn't, you know, you can ask why, you know, but it doesn't matter. The point is it's predictable. It's comfortable. And we all make choices like that. So it's easy to see that the brain sort of wires itself, which in the neuroscience, it absolutely does. It thoughts and feelings, they is a co-trigger that happens in the body that wires the nervous system in a certain way that aligns with whatever it is uh, that's happening. So you can, if we use the abuse example, we can say, you know, that was happening, things are getting triggered in the brain and the nervous system, and it becomes a path that's very open and has easy flow. And, um, and we, just to add to that, a little example that I learned in the High Human Awareness Institute that I really love is that if you think about marbles on top of like a sandy kind of mountain, the marble will keep going down the groove that's the easiest. And it'll just keep making this groove because you put the marble on top, where is it gonna go? It's gonna go down the groove. That's the easiest one to, for it to go down. And that's an example of that is what happens in the nervous system. To go down the other side, let's say of the mountain where there's no groove takes effort, takes pushing it over, it takes creating the groove. Now we gotta create that groove, there's work there. But the other's like, easy, no problem. So, um, and that happens consciously and unconsciously. And that's, that's the part that is so interesting to me. Um, just really, really interesting to me. Yeah, that's a really big piece. So you can see things like, um, I mean, I guess I want to use a personal example and I'm not using this because I want you to feel like, oh, you know, that happened to Robin. Like, yeah, these things happened to me in my life. I had a lot of loss as a child. My mother died young. Then my father died actually also pretty young. And then I chose a partner that I thought was going to be my life partner. And guess what? He also died. And so it's like, did I choose that consciously? No, but something in the energy and my soul and my awareness that I'm not fully aware of 
you know, the, the, the marble has, has an, it's an easy groove because of all that life experience. Um, and, you know, there's, you know, way too much complexity to sort of explain that away, but it is an example for me of how these grooves in our nervous system are so strong and so powerful. And uh, they just, they go with ease. So there's a zillion more examples on the neuroplasticity piece. And as some of you know already, I find I'm finding that this work fascinating for the last three years. And I definitely can see with a lot of clarity that the nervous system, the nervous system and the way the limbic system got patterned in all of us is a big part of the healing when it comes to come back to love when it comes to coming back to our hearts, when it comes to staying connected with ourselves and when it, when it comes to being in connection with other people. And that this nervous system work or this rewiring of the nervous system um, is really uh, powerful and it works. That's the thing, it actually works. And I'll talk about it in more depth in one of the classes. So you'll have some specific tools you can use but I just want to say, like, I have seen what looks to me like miraculous healing in other people, in many hundreds of other people over the course of the last three years that I've been witnessing people do this work. And my own healing, doing it myself, um, has been enormous and unexpected because, like I said, I didn't know. I thought it was like, do the emotional work and all is well. Um, but it's not 100% true. And those of you that have kids, I mean, you know, there's so much going on with our kids with anxiety and um, that nervous system work is so important for them. And I'm watching, you know, the kids, some of the kids be able to do it and, and have really good tools to manage all that's going on in their worlds. So it's really powerful. Okay, I spoke longer than I expected. Um, I wanted to leave, <laughs> no surprise. <laughs> Um, although I always think I don't have anything to, I don't have not nothing, but I, 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 my, I have a thought, which I don't need to believe, but I have a thought like, um, you know, I don't have tons of material to speak to. Yes. I could speak about this stuff all day is the truth. So, um, yeah. So I just wanted to leave a couple minutes for questions or just sharing an awareness, um, of your experience of the self-inquiry exercise or just listening anything you want to share we've got you know seven minutes to do that just plenty of time so just want to open it up for that piece questions or awareness and also i guess i want to say and then mark's gonna you're gonna unmute aren't you good okay so, sorry <laughs> no that's perfect <laughs> So, a spiritual, philosophical, energetic awareness question uh, that I'm sure has some emotional healing component uh, that's tied to the nervous system. Right. <laughs> I, I got it all. Yeah, I'm so, glad. Okay, so so I I come in the moment before conception, and this is just like the brilliance is so much fun, and then I come into this pile of this mishigash it's like what the fuck did i just do <laughs> right yes <laughs> so <laughs> right why did i do and, that <laughs> why did i do that and the path just goes like back and forth like it's like a ping pong you know and just waiting for the ball to continue going ping pong ping you know to drop like what the fuck <laughs> A great question. Yeah, yeah. A great question. So, yeah, it's a great question. My 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 question and response would be, or my invitation, the question from a hundred feet up. What's the answer to that question? You know, like what do you see from a hundred? Right, 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 right. Yeah. There's so much information actually to gather from that space. Um, and the trick in that space is not to let the mind take over, 
right? And try to make logical conclusions. Right, right, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's the ping, that's the ping pong path, right? <laughs> right. You never never know where it's going to bounce, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. It's not a matter of letting the mind take over. The mind has already taken over. Right. You just right. can't get it out of the way. Right. That's yeah. true. Right. right. The practice is to get it out of the way. As many of you yeah. practice meditation, so you know what a feat that is. But yeah, that's great, Mark. I, I love the uh, I love the invitation to I love sort of how you all laid it out all the Michigas and how it relates to everything. And then you could take that spiritual awareness piece, right? And go out and expand it all out and see what you see, see what you notice, see what you see. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I have to uh, yeah, you're uh, log off. Yeah. 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 The, uh, the, the, they're about to knock on my door to kick me out of my room. So. Yeah. Okay. Have a good trip. <laughs> See you next nice week. Nice to see you guys. Yeah, Thanks, thank bye. You. bye. I had a, um, you know, in, in sitting with my triggers and thinking about recent triggers, um, I think that was a, a valuable piece of today. And um, I had some other input, insights about recent triggers. But the thing that you said that I, that I really love, and I'm going to keep bringing this back, is... Um, you know, the thoughts that you have about triggers, you don't have to believe them, you know? So um, that was just a different, a shift in, in the paradigm for me, like mm -hmm. notice, okay, this is a trigger. What are the thoughts I'm having about this trigger? And then, um, you know, are they true? Well, I think they are. Right. <laughs> right. We believe our thoughts so strongly. Right. Yeah. So then another question there is like, well, what if they aren't true? Then what, you know? Well, then that's what you said when you're talking about the energetic piece, you know, or, or, you know, it would, a what, what, how did you say it? Would an energetic, being would an infinite being make that choice, make that choice, you know, that's a different perspective to pull in. And I think that's a really helpful one. Yeah. Yeah. And you might even ask yourself, like, would an infinite being have this thought? It's another one that pops yeah. in, for me, you know, yeah. And see what that's the really yeah, so that's really helpful just to, to shift the perspective a little bit. Right. Yeah, good. Good. Yeah, shifting the perspective definitely allows for more possibilities. From the little me to the big me. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and it reminds me that, you know, sometimes we're in situations that seem not to have a possible solution or it doesn't seem, yeah, like it doesn't seem like anything's possible, like it's stuck. And so all of these things sort of loosen that up and then open up so many possibilities, hmm. infinite possibilities actually. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I hope you feel better. Thank you. Yeah. Perfect. Another minute for any other comments or questions. I don't expect or want infinite possibilities, but I would like to have more than one. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> more than one would be really great. Yes. Yes. And there are plenty more than one, even two or three or infinite. <laughs> well, thank you all for being here. And I look forward to seeing those of you that are here live next week. I know, um, Paul, you might be working. Um, you know, we'll see over the next couple of weeks who's here live and who's listening in. But um, reminds me to say uh, to join the Facebook group. And that'll be uh, the link should be in your materials. If not, if you can't find it or you need a reminder, just let me know. Um, I think I did invite a few of you to the Facebook group. So that'll just be a place for us to share and, um, and yeah, connect outside of the, of the live Zooms each week. So 
All right. Well, I look forward to taking this journey with you. Thank you, Celeste. It's to be working next to Tuesdays. All good. Yeah. And hopefully Cindy's feeling better and she'll be here live next week. I hope you guys have a beautiful day. Mwah. Lots of love. Bye.